Hi there, welcome back. Kind of a nice day today, getting kind of cool. Yesterday was uh, opening day for deer season for youth hunters. So uh, that's got to tell you fall is definitely in the air. Uh, thought I'd take the time to see if I can get some of our small engines ready for winter around here. I've got to change the oil in our generator. I've got to drain the gas out of the uh, chainsaw and the weed whip and probably our rototiller and our wood splitter too. I don't like to leave uh, fuel in the fuel tanks of our small engines. I've had problems before. Uh, ethanol based fuel gums up and really can destroy a carburetor in a fairly short period of time. So even the saw that I keep in the truck, I drain and I keep a uh, a quart can of ready mix that's supposed to have no additives in it and it's not supposed to spoil in there with the saw that way if I need to use it in the middle of the winter I've got fuel on hand but I do keep it drained down because these tools are expensive you really got to take care of them so anyway that's what I'm doing so if you guys want to watch here we go Now I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, warm this saw up so that I know that I've I've got some gas at least through the carburetor, and uh, I want to make sure I get it all. So when it runs out, I want to make sure that it's all gone. So I'm gonna start it and warm it up first. That way I'll know I've you know I'm getting good fuel through the machine, and give it a shot of oil and gas before I drain it. So that's the plan. My little steel MS261. Okay, now that should be warm enough so I don't have to run the choke the next time I start it to get all the gas out. So what I'm going to do now, this is a can of saw gas that I've mixed up non-ethanol fuel and I probably still got half a gallon or so left I'm not gonna put it to waste I'm gonna put it right in the tank of the truck with the rest of my gas and run that out but I would never leave mixed gas around longer than a month or so because it can go bad part can get a little messy. Now that we've emptied the tank, put the cap back on. Put the cap back on this just in case. And we'll start the saw and run the carburetor out of fuel. Okay, now we're going to choke it, make sure we get every last drop out. Yeah, we may have already got it. Okay, I'm going to say that is it. So that actually ran quite a while with that old gas still in the fuel line. That would be enough, because that means your carburetor was full too. I just like to get it out of there. Old habits die hard. So now this is ready for winter. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the uh, string trimmer. Okay, I'm going to say that's good and warmed up. You want to be careful doing this because uh, 
you're dealing with gasoline where I warm these up the uh, the exhaust is actually going to be fairly warm so you want to take special care not to get fuel on a hot exhaust okay so now the uh, tank is empty we're going to fire it up and run the gas out of the out of the uh, carburetor and the fuel line hopefully I'm gonna say that is empty that seems probably like a pain to some of you folks but you could literally take one of these to the shop every year to get them to fix the carburetor because you don't do that you really need to get that old gas out of there when you're gonna store them for the winter it's the best thing for them best thing for your wallet too and your aggravation level okay <laughs> and now I'm gonna show you what I do with this old saw gas that isn't gonna get used up this year now my truck is probably always over half full of fuel. Obvious reasons, we don't like to let them get down very far. We like to keep gas in our vehicles and gas on hand. But there isn't enough two cycle oil in this gasoline to hurt this truck any with the amount of uh, gas that's already in there. So, you might as well use it, right? Hey. There you go, that's a free trip to work. <laughs> okay, now that I've uh, emptied out our mixed gas can, you'll also notice that I keep my cans labeled. If you're gonna run two stroke equipment, you should really have one dedicated fuel can just for two cycle gas. Because if you get them mixed up and you put straight gas into a chainsaw, you're gonna have some serious trouble. It's gonna cost you at least a rebuild or maybe a whole chainsaw. So always label your cans. Now, the reason I got rid of that is because it goes bad eventually, in theory. I don't trust what comes from the pump anymore, even though they say it's non-ethanol and it is better. Um, I really, really try not to leave it in anything. So what I do keep is a full can of this ready mix stuff that is supposed to store pretty much forever. I don't put it in the saw, I just leave it in the cans. This is two different kinds, VP, Husqvarna. Steel has their own, all the companies do, and also some of the fuel companies like VP. From what I've seen, it's all good. It works really good. And uh, it also is great to get that really nice fuel into the, into the saw at the beginning of the season when you're first starting to clean any goo in there that might be out. So the saw goes into my toolbox pretty much dry. And I'll put one of these cans in there with it. So we'll throw that in there. Also my, my wonderful turkey keeping me company this morning. I also throw a, uh, a quart bottle of Byron chain oil in there. Uh, I try to make sure the Byron chain oil's enough empty on the saw so the saw doesn't get warm and start leaking Byron chain oil inside my toolbox. You can take a regular oil can from changing your oil in your vehicle and put Byron chain oil in it, label it, and use that. This stuff was on sale at, uh, as you can see, Tractor Supply. So uh, that's going to be what I put in this year. Hopefully I'll never use it, but I'm Actually, sure, I will, either in the driveway or on my trip to work. There. That should get us back in, in good season. Oh, and actually, one other thing that I keep in there for the saw is one of these. These, uh, these are steel two-in-one sharpeners. And they have the raker and the round file all in there for you. And all these bars are used to show you the angle and the depth. So you're literally sharpening your raker at the same time you're sharpening, sharpening your tooth. They're labeled which way they cut. And uh, when you get done filing one side, you flip it over and you're using the other round file. And these guides actually sit right on your teeth 
and they make sure that you you get the right depth of cut and also it gives you if you look there's little marks and the angle that are on you that's actually the angle that you sharpen your teeth at so it's pretty hard to go wrong with one of these I've been hand filing chainsaws with just files since I was probably 12 years old and I thought this was a gimmick but it's just so fast and it works so good I give in I bought one for both sizes of chain that I have this one's 325 pitch for my little saw I bought a 3 8 pitch for the big saws it's just too easy it's just too easy especially if you're trying to file a saw on a tailgate or on a stump you don't need to concentrate on you know making everything so perfect your angles already there you can just run it through it and it takes the it, it takes the um, the top off your acres and puts a nice edge on your cutters all at the same time it's just kind of a no-brainer so they're a little expensive i think they're 20 or 30 bucks but they're definitely worth it i would advise you with any saw uh get the proper one of these and buy one it'll save you a lot of aggravation Especially if you don't have the time to put the saw in a vise and do it that way. Um, it just, it's just too easy. It's too easy not to have. So that'll go in my toolbox too. I keep a few tools in there. The stuff that I need to service my truck. Stuff that I need to service that generator. Things like that. And the toolbox is locked all the time. I never keep firearms or anything in there because... It's just a bad idea and the temperature goes up and it goes down and that, that's just not the way you want to treat guns or anything or ammunition or any of that stuff. So it's toolbox, that's what it's for, it's for tools. This truck gets used more in the woods than our big Toyota does. So I keep like a, uh, a heavy duty cast aluminum come along in there and a uh, snatch block pulley, a couple of straps, some chains, you know, in case you get stuck. I don't have a winch on this thing, but that come along is more than capable of pulling this out. Of course, the spare is mounted underneath and all the jacks and tools and everything are in here. So this is our out in the woods truck. That's why it's got the saw and stuff in it. That and it's it's the one that goes back and forth to town most often because this is the truck that I drive back and forth to work. Mm -hmm.